Professor Marcus, yes, it's a pleasure and honor to have you here. Well, it's great to be here in this wonderful sunshine. I was expecting bad weather, but apparently you overruled that and provided good. That's so right. I congratulate you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, you are the youngest person participated in our conferences. I, you I know? felt that way at times, yes. Yeah, it's called second childhood. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my you're born the same year that my father is born. born yes. So it's, it's a very nice There's coincidence. No connection. Yes, everywhere are connections. I mean, we had to wait all these years to make it connect. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So you did uh, 14 hours non-stop from LA to. Munich and Munich to... Yeah, maybe more like 12 hours. 12 hours, yes. Yeah, I have done 17 hours non-stop to Singapore. Okay, directly from LA. Uh, I, can't, I think that one was from San Francisco. It's but a, I, I, in the past, they used to have one from LA and they did that. Yeah. It's amazing. And that's what we really admire, especially me personally. Well, to the, your activity, well, non-stop I, I activity. Well. Well, it's been interesting to meet a lot of different people, too. Yeah. People I never knew and come up and introduce themselves. This was my question also. You are yeah. participating for the first time in our yeah. SIPs, in our summit. Yeah. And now I wanted some of your impressions. Well, the first impression is the uh, friendliness of the people, the, you know, the participants. They uh, universally that way, and uh, it seems to be a very happy group of people interested. Um, I imagine they got quite a bit out of the lectures. You know, I don't know their backgrounds. But uh, everybody seemed to be enjoying themselves as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. And you have participated in so many conferences around the world. Uh, what? Uh, Hearts, yes. Sure. So what do you see any difference between our uh, our conference and others? Any any um, things that we do the, differently? Well, uh, the breadth of the conference. It covers such a wide variety of fields. Often international conferences are, are focused on a few topics and so on. But this covers the gamut and uh, covers a lot of work of industrial interests and work of academic interest so it's it's a very broad coverage and certainly this is a wonderful environment to hold it in. But, um, so i think uh, uh, the breadth of the subjects for an international conference is one of the things that stands out uh, you know often at international conferences people are in a good mood anyway so Maybe that part is unique, you know? yeah. but certainly the people here are in good mood. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we have the plenary, summit plenary lectures that uh, link them together by giving the usefulness of any field sure. at, at the service of the society to make yeah. the society better. Right. Uh, you were awarded Frey International oh, Sustainability yes. Award. Well, it was unexpected. And then also there's the award that you arranged in my name. I've forgotten the, what the name of the award is. <laughs> that was the second Perhaps question. Send it be in the, sure, it will be, oh, be, uh, yeah. be in the website. It will be in the website. It is no, Marcus. Sure, yeah. It is Marcus well, I, International uh, Management Award. Why? Because you managed your life for 96 years old in an excellent way. And it's to out that way. <laughs> to manage to manage yes. your body and your mind yeah. in an excellent way for 96 years is an is an inspiration for any type of management. So that's why we well, called it Marcus well, International thoughtful. Managing Award. Yeah, I should tell you though that the chances of there being an additional 96 and hence another award for it are small. Well. Next year, it will be the next, the second Marcos International Managing Award. Oh, okay. So Very we good. give it every year. Ah, so okay. you are invited next year also right, to witness uh, the second Marcos International yes, Managing Award. Where are you holding it? 
the most probably it will be but almost done in uh, Phuket, Thailand. Well, that was one of your original plans, wasn't it? Yes, uh, that's the original yes, plan. And then you switched. To uh, that was the one, one of the candidates this year. And by the way, chose this because normally it was the turn of Europe. We are in in uh, Cancun, right. uh, Central America. We are right. in Rio de Janeiro, South America. Right. Right. And now this was time of Europe. Ah, Next okay. time it is Asia. Right. Okay. Yeah. And probably we will return to Panama uh -huh. in 2020. Mm -hmm. But as we go around the world, yeah, like this or yeah, like interesting, this. Interesting, interesting. Always in one direction. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, <laughs> but at least to have a to have a rotation. Sure, yeah, sure. Not necessarily, but we can decide any. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, you, I presented there a new concept we have developed. Um, uh, sustainability framework. So it's a criteria of sustainability that are supported by three pillars of sustainability. It's a mm -hmm. table with three legs. Mm -hmm. So one is science and technology, one it is um, uh, governance and uh, management, mm -hmm. and the other one is education and civil society. Yeah. So how you see, so these are three pillars that, that uh, very necessary to, to support and to achieve sustainability. If one of them falls down a table with three chairs, with yeah, three, sure. three legs, will sure. end up um, uh, nothing. Sure. So, but in these three legs, in these three triangle, how you see the role of science and technology? Well, I think the role of science and technology is, you know, absolutely essential. When you think of all the developments that have been made how much lives have been changed, how much certain work processes have been freed up to do other things, new things. So uh, I, I think they've had a, an absolutely dramatic effect. You know, if you compare the way people live now and the way they lived before the Industrial Revolution, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic change. So that reflects uh, uh, all of these new developments. Of course, it's true that probably some people are hurt by it. You know, people are in uh, some of lower occupations that have been taken away by machines. Uh, uh, it, it may be difficult for them to get retrained. And so, uh, you know, probably, well, when you think of both things that happen, there's probably another side to it, too. It's not always that a certain step is always good. There are winners and losers. And, uh, well, uh, but you hope that your step will be have more winners than losers. Yeah. Well, our idea as Lojan is that sure, the jobs will be lost through the automation, but this frees up space and uh, sure. possibility yeah. to, to occupy yourself, not with the routine work. Yeah. Automation uh, right, uh, right. makes sure uh, uh, covers our yeah. Or eliminates routine work. Yeah, but no, human absolutely. Being, yeah. Human beings. I, I think you were there when I presented mm. it. Yeah. Human being needs to, needs to deal with the new invention, new development, and this to the extent that they're capable. Sure. There are some people that are very well trained that adapt will adapt to that, and there are other people who, unfortunately, have not been well trained. And it's difficult, prob my guess, I don't know yeah, no. such people, but that's my guess, no, no, uh, that some people that just don't have that kind of training that permits them to go the next step. I mean, that's probably one of the problems that society faces and that it has to handle early on, before even the children go to school, you know, to put them in, in a framework. Uh, where they can really benefit you, and learn. You came late today in my third part of the presentation. Mm, right. And I mentioned here where the role of government comes in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Government as a can have an as a important one of the legs of the three. Absolutely. There they can give money to retrain people of and to course. put it in a new yeah. different position. And they can also give money to uh, help develop the younger people while they're yes. still very young. And uh, they're not put into uh, third-class schools uh, simply because they can't afford it. Uh, because it later on would have benefits for society. Yeah. Yeah. If they're better trained, and they're more able to adapt to the more recent and more sophisticated, sophisticated ways of doing things. Sure. Yeah. So 96 years old, and when you decided to, to uh, 
deal with science, to have science... Well, you know, I, of course I've often been asked that. Um, I think it, although I didn't realize it at the time, I think it goes way back to early childhood. Not in the form of conventional science, but in the form of an utter fascination with construction toys. I had an erector set, I had a mechano set, I had a whatever it's called, jigsaw, not jigsaw, but some jig, <laughs> wooden uh, uh, the wheels and wooden uh, sticks and so on. There's a name for it. So a lot of my young life was spent constructing things with, with these various types of sets. And when I look back on the science of the science that I've done, so much of it involves construction. So much of it involves taking a concept from here and a concept from there, putting them together, bringing in an experiment here and an experiment from there. It's really a construction. And I think that, uh, that those were the er early seeds of what my interests were. Now, uh, why not law? Why not Venice? Oh, why not? No, I don't know. I, it never occurred to me to do that. Uh, but uh, I always loved mathematics. Okay. I mean, like in one course I remember a long, long time ago, you're, you're required to do every problem, uh, every other problem, but I liked it so much I did every problem. <laughs> um, of course, some of it may have, um, you know, a genetic component. Like, for example, one of my father's brothers uh, even though we ended up being a medical doctor, won a number of mathematical prizes in high wow. school. Is he? And he was a medical doctor. So uh, probably there's, I imagine there's some genetic component. I don't know. <laughs> I, oh, I should be, yeah. sure. But yeah. uh, what is yeah. amazing, your activity, your activity, you are in constant activity, constant that's, working. That's true, that's true. And this that's helps true. a lot. Yeah. That's true. But you know, interesting enough, I look back sometimes younger and um, I used to go off with my wife, my late wife, uh, used to go off uh, once a month on a camping trip. Okay. Take off a month camping. I'd be teaching, and this was among my most productive years. And then it would take me a month to get back into the swing. No. It would take me a month to get back into the swing of working. So in, in my most productive times, I was taking two months off a year, you see. But I think what counts is the, uh, maybe the, the quality of the time that you spend, uh, the focus that you bring to it, how intense you work on it. Uh, and it's not necessary to do it all the time, I guess. At least at that time, I, uh, uh, eventually I stopped doing that. Uh, for vacations, family vacations, we go to some place near a laboratory, something like that, and I'd work. And the family would have their vacation. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. The doctor used to say, uh, "We do not get, uh, we do not retire because we get old, mm -hmm. but we get old because we retire." I think there's probably truth to that. That if you retire, if you cut off, if you happen to cut off from yourself from all intellectual activity. If you do that, then I would imagine that mentally you would shrivel up. <coughs> and uh, I don't know what the consequence of that, but I can't imagine that it be good for the spirit. I imagine one would feel guilty. And uh, I imagine that would have adverse consequences, but I have no idea. Uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, amazing. But I, I do, I mean, the work I do, I do simply because I love doing it. You know, I, I want to know the answer. A problem comes, I want to know the answer. So it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. Of course, it can be painful. Sometimes going through all these details and being as careful as you can not to make an error here or there or something, or forcing yourself to think something through, it, there's a kind of a pain with that. You know, is you really have to, you know, focus. But uh, on the other hand, it's kind of a challenge. It's a little bit like, I don't know if you're a skier, but uh, if you skied and you didn't ski very well, yeah. you come up to a very steep hill and you don't want to take the lift back down. So you look down there and decide, all right, you're going to go for it. 
Well, research is sometimes a bit like that. You're amazing. Uh, you're funny. <laughs> really. Really. <laughs> it's, uh, you are the, the youngest one among Nobel laureates, and you are the funniest one. <laughs> and you are always... Uh, well, my parents were, were jovial, I would say. They were? Think, yeah, I think so. My grandmother, the one I knew best because she lived in Montreal, uh, had a yeah. sense of, uh, that's where I grew up, yeah. Uh, I, had a I real sense more, of humor. I live most of the time in Montreal. Yes, I understand that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I um, went to McGill, of course. Oh, and, okay. uh, yeah. Went to an excellent high school. Um, were all the teachers that I knew of were well, maybe except one, were very conscientious and certainly very caring towards the students. It was known as a good high school. A lot of well-known people came from there. Yeah, yeah. I have happy memories of it. And uh, you miss the time. Do you miss? Miss? The time? No, no. I, I, I think I live in the present. There's uh, there's so much to do. There's, yes, there's more to do than I can handle, really. <laughs> I mean, right now I'm juggling, uh, I don't know, three, four, or five papers or so from various co-workers. That, uh, so you are writing? Yes, oh yes, I have some here with me. And, uh, oh really, and you are working here? Yes, uh, yes, that's right. Wow. In fact, the other day, there are three, only three hour, uh, three uh, days. Yes, I know. But the other day, w one of the people at the hotel, uh, he's an older person, he was there older at the dinner. Than <laughs> younger than you. I think he's younger. Uh, uh, he belongs to the hotel. Anyways, he was helping at the dinner last night. And uh, uh, I uh, wanted to uh, uh, copy, uh, to print out a certain paper that I had that a co-worker had sent me and I wanted to make corrections. And you have that copier upstairs that, uh, you know, that belongs to the group, I guess. And uh, I had trouble using it, but he managed to make it work. And so that gave me a copy that I could proceed to mark up. So I'm very grateful. <laughs> because uh, sometimes in order to make corrections to a paper, it's good to have the paper there, then you can mark that. Other than the other alternatives, to write a list, line so and so and so and so. Please make this correction or something. It's easier to mark the corrections on so the paper. So you more papers now than before. No, no, no. Oh, well, you know, most of my papers before the Nobel Prize. Well, actually, most of my papers before uh, 1964, before that. Um, and many of them after. Well, actually, single authored. I did them on my own. The electron transfer theory, I did on my own. The unimolecular reaction theory, I did on my own. Some of the more recent stuff, uh, I did with a collaborator too. But certainly in the early stages and the stuff, the material for which I got the prize, everything there was done on my own. And the advantage when you can of doing it on your own is that you are the slowest thing happening. So you can work and work and work and really make things go more quickly. When you're working with a group, it, it can take more time, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's a, a really high pressure, a high pleasure for us to have you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Enlightened our, 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 our summit. Well, thank you. I, you know, I'm sure like uh, many people who are university teachers, one feels at times like a missionary. <laughs> one feels at times like a missionary, trying to bring a way of life <laughs> to the converted and to the unconverted. <laughs> yeah. You know the history, what they propose. Yes. So, well, again, uh, we, we wish you all the best. Well, I thank you. We want you to be with you and to travel and not All right. stop. All right, Please thank you. It's the genes, you choose the genes very well. Yes, that's right. I, <laughs> that's my proudest achievement. <laughs>
Yeah, in SIPS 2020, at 97 years old, at you will be. Yes. You will be in Phuket. Yeah. All right. And we'll we try. need your humor. Yeah. All probably right. this is one <laughs> part of the genes. Yeah. Sure. It's yeah, humor. Oh yeah, it probably is. As, uh, as it's humor. Both my parents, and uh, well, I, uh, most of my my father's family. I, my mother's family didn't know because they lived in England. But most of my, the, my father's family that I do and grew up with had um, a real sense of humor. They really enjoyed. Thank you again. So, uh, it's my my third time. Okay. <laughs>